in the last uh, in the last 48 hours, and it, it's horrible to see the children that have been killed as a result of Bashar al-Assad. They didn't get 100 percent of the chemical weapons out, did they? Clearly, they didn't, and it should be noted that the same people that are claiming or were claiming that 100 percent of those chemical weapons were taken out of Syria are the same individuals who promise us that the deal that they've struck with Iran will prevent the Iranians from getting nuclear weapons in the not too distant future. So I think that needs to be kept in mind here when we look at the foreign policy of the previous administration. And looking at this, it establishes a new paradigm, a new framework for everything that comes after this. Of course, this does not topple the Assad regime, nor does it destroy ISIS. This is just one strike of what could be many more either military or diplomatic actions that have teeth behind them, though, that actually will be enforceable or will be based on the credible threat of force, that's what was lacking with the previous administration. The notion that there would be a political process, a political process that we could be working with to get rid of the Assad regime is not new. This is longstanding policy. But Assad knew under the Obama time, uh, under, under Obama's term in office, that there was not going to be any action taken against him. And in fact, Russia saw this as well as an opportunity to escalate its force and posture in Syria. Mm -hmm. So this is where things can change. It's just the beginning of a much larger, a much longer process. So, so do we need to bring some other players on board? I mean, who else will join us now in this fight? Well, now when people talk about an international coalition of countries, it's not just going to be a lot of people gathering together in some European capital to discuss what the future of Syria might look like. Now they can at least believe that the U.S., when it says there are red lines, for example, in Syria, they can even draw further red lines from what President Obama stated some years ago. That has credibility behind it. And now you can start to push towards a political settlement. But this is, there are many steps that have to go forward with first. You have to get rid of the Islamic State. There has to be a credible ground force there and then a political and opposition who, and political right, institutions. Now, this is work that should have been done over the last, oh, five or six years and hasn't been but that doesn't mean that it's not the work that needs to be done today by the Trump administration. I think that's what they're trying to do. Um, do they have any idea, Rick, who they would put in? I mean, are there, are there people that could succeed Assad there? Well, I think this changes the calculus even for those who want to take over Syria. So, yes, I mean, a lot of people in the region have been waiting for something to happen, including the Turks. Uh, which are our great NATO ally. Look, I, I think one opening here, and I agree, I agree with everything that, that Buck said, one of the openings that we have now is that we learned from the Turkish-Russian conversations, which have been picking up over the last year, that Russia is not ab absolutely uh, driven by being inside Syria. They would like to get out. There have been signals that they are not so are happy with what's going on. Why are they sending a destroyer towards us? Well, look, I, I don't think that that is, uh, you know, in and of itself, their reaction. There is no question that the Russians have signaled that they don't want to be in Syria mm -hmm. for a very long time. They're getting annoyed with Assad. Mm -hmm. And I think that this now changes the calculation. Certainly it's not a done deal, but we now have an opportunity, a diplomatic opportunity, if we can get the Turks on board, if we can get the Saudis on board, and I the Egyptians uh, and the Jordanians, quickly, I think that there's a way to, to bring it forward to the Russians and say, very, change yeah, your calculus. Very quickly, before we go, Buck, you know, so many people, uh, of course, have been pointing the finger at the cozy relationship between Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump. I guess this may uh, poke a few holes in that theory. I would certainly think so. The first major foreign policy decision and action by this administration is really a slap in the face to Putin, and it's one that is much needed. So that, should, that should factor right. into people's calculations. Buck, good to see you. Thank you, Rick, as well.